Hi. Uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, well, thank you, Raghu, for those words. But, well, actually, I don't mind it for this audience because this is an audience that I uh, sort of naturally connect to just because of my interest in this domain. Uh, well, first of all, happy to inaugurate the conference. And, uh, I, you know, I think uh, the kind of efforts uh, I am Bangalore Toulouse Business School have put in uh, to kind of give focus to uh, aviation and uh, aerospace and uh, with the tremendous support that our executive education uh, staff out here, uh, Madan, Richa, and, you know, I think, and of course, all the uh, wonderful alumni and participants of the uh, general management program we have for aviation uh, executives. So, so partly it's also for us to get a visibility to the kind of efforts that IAM Bangalore is putting in in this domain. In fact, currently back in campus, we are running a program for the Airports Authority of India. Um, you know, between two programs, we'll probably be, you know, addressing about 50 of their uh, senior uh, executives. Um, so we, you know, and being in Bangalore, natural connect with uh, the aviation uh, sector in the country, you know, we hope to do our bit to contribute to uh, aviation and aerospace in India. Well, uh, I just thought I'll share some thoughts on, you know, the way I see this. Well, I just put together, like, in the past uh, couple of weeks, you know, the kind of news items. You know, aviation is very much in the news. Uh, be it, of course, the budget that the Civil Aviation Ministry has put in. Of course, this is what the from the general budget contribution, 6,600 crores, which in an overall assessment I think is a small amount. Uh, for example, you know, railways alone, uh, the general budget is contributing about 60, you know, about 10 times this. <coughs> of course, this is not what is reflected will be the total investments because a lot of it will come from within the sector. But anyway. Of course, India is the, you know, fastest growing domestic aviation market, uh, you know, and various perspectives, uh, be it the IATA or be it Boeing. Of course, India's unpaid bills likely to raise its uh, debt figure up. Actually, sorry, that should be Air India's. Air India. Airlines liable to pay passengers for denying boarding. Yeah, right. You know, I mean, low cost carriers can't get away. Uh, they need to get more responsible towards customers. Uh, Mid-air collision averted, Vistara and AI, you know, our ATC. Uh, Nepal seeks uh, India not for inbound flights from the West. I mean, Israel to give, ah, to give funds to Air India for launching a direct Delhi Tel Aviv flight. Interesting. El Al is the only direct flight right now, but El Al can't fly direct. Many countries would not give airspace rights, and an El Al flight takes a lot more time than possibly what an Air India flight could have, uh, unless, of course, those same countries say, hey, you're going to land in Israel, therefore. <coughs> well, AI to uh, invest, you know, they're, they're going to invest obviously a lot more than what the budgetary support is. This uh, AI is, you know, sitting quiet and collecting good money from Delhi and Mumbai on the revenue share. Um, private airport operators urge government to bar AI from bidding for PPP projects. Now that's interesting. See, AI took this position that, uh, you know, we know airport operations, which in a way I think is, is good. I think it was a bold position to say, look, inc either increasingly my own airports, the central government is going to give it to the private parties or state governments are also coming in saying, hey, I want to open up new airports 
and I open it up for bidding. So AAI says, why can't I bid for state government airports? So they actually bid for the Mopa airport in Goa, lost. Then they bid for the Bhogapuram airport in Vishakapatnam, won. But God knows what's happened. Suddenly, Andhra government says they are cancelling the bids. You have private operators, GMR, GVK, etc. And of course, together they have written to the government saying, how can AAI bid? Isn't it a conflict of interest? <coughs> uh, well, Navi Mumbai International Airport, you know, after the privatization of Delhi Mumbai, you know, a 10 year hiatus in the country. Uh, I think finally we got our next round of documents with a little more confidence and uh, well then we ran into environmental issues in Navi Mumbai. Lots of things had to be resolved. Looks like we are finally there and anyway the foundation stone was laid uh, I think last Sunday. Um, <coughs> Airport bids to get attractive as government decides to fix fees first. I mean, that's interesting because actually in road projects and then later on in port projects, uh, bids, the, the, you know, the revenue, the, the pricing is, at least the pricing framework is uh, put up front, which was not yet the case in airports, though we have the AERA. So now that's happened. So I think you know, there's a little more confidence then. India attracting big aerospace manufacturers. I hope so. Okay, so, and uh, Saras and Mahindra Aerospace, Aerospace. Fine, I mean, these are just a collection of news items over the past uh, couple of weeks. Yeah. <coughs> Fine, I mean, these are the themes for today's uh, event. I think lots of thought has gone into it and uh, you know I wish, uh, wish all of us well in some good deliberations over the day uh, right up to you know of course I mean uh, IOT big data uh, customer strategic insights on customer behavior government aid uh, India you know MRO destination we've been talking about it for a long time Flights still go out of India for MRO uh, talent. Okay. So, uh, just the overall structure of the aviation industry. Well, we hopefully keep customers up there and customers not only passengers. I think freight is big business. We have airlines as, as core actors. We have airlines, airports and a whole range of uh, agent, uh, agents, service providers, you know, freight forwarders, catering, ground handling, travel agents who together bring in the core and then there are of course other tangible elements which are close to the core. I mean you have airline manufacturing, leasing because you need the talent, not only pilots, pilots, engineers, yeah, fuel suppliers, other equipment suppliers and then a bunch of support services, financing, insurance, MRO air navigation, IT, uh, industry associations, training, and then government and regulation, <coughs> ICAO internationally, DGCA, AERA, tax administrators, ministry, and states. So that's a pretty large ecosystem there. Fine. So globally, we are looking at... Uh, I think almost uh, uh, 8 billion passengers in airports and 4 billion passengers on flights. I mean, airports both emplaning and deplaning, so kind of twice. So anyway, out of the 8 billion, 1.4 billion are in the top 20 airports. Uh, India, not yet, but hopefully soon enough we will be there uh, because we just, I think the top 20 close in at uh, 55, 56 million. Uh, I think Delhi is just, just below there. <coughs> uh, okay, that's the international. 
uh, in fact out of the 1.4 billion in the top 20 airports uh, close to a billion is actually international traffic well airlines uh, the top uh, 25 airlines together fly uh, 2 billion passengers if you add all that up I mean southwest is uh, the highest up there so out of the 4 billion passengers top 25 airlines account for nearly 50 percent okay so of course growth wise uh, we see well of course Vietnam number one growth rate wise uh, as the future forecast of course maybe a smaller market but uh, smaller base and therefore a high uh, growth expectation India for a large country large base 7.5 percent I mean I think that's pretty significant so that's I mean placing bets on India is, is good okay uh, of course China also I mean at 6 percent for a much larger uh, aviation market already well uh, that is pretty significant of course we can see most of the countries are Asia right now <coughs> in terms of uh, airports the fastest growing uh, expectation is New Delhi followed by Incheon in Korea and China then Mumbai and you know a few other airports uh, US airports still seem to you know be buoyant LA Seattle Denver fine so just a brief on <coughs> passenger traffic globally uh, closing in on 8 billion India's point to you know so we can see the share in passenger traffic cargo traffic aircraft movements 2 3 percent well population wise 14 15 percent so on a per capita basis India has a huge growth potential fine I mean these are various uh, parameters in assessing you know what will make this happen or you know what are the drivers essentially robust demand opportunities in MRO you know potential investments there is interest in investing in India and hopefully policy support is uh, moving in the right direction <coughs> of course if you see airlines in India I mean air in, you know on the right side you have the plus minus so Air India a strong negative uh, jet looks like indigo is being able to sustain a positive and spice jet <coughs> there are of course a whole range of other airlines that are coming in uh, not only national carriers like go and you know Vistara and Air Asia and so on but many under the Udan scheme and Okay, that's the top 10 airports starting from Indira Gandhi all the way down to Goa. <coughs> so Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore as number 3, Chennai, uh, Kolkata and then Hyderabad, Cochin. Okay, in fact if you see the top few airports, uh, 5 of them are outside the AAI ambit. So as AAI says now more than 50% of the market is outside the uh, uh, you know what they are doing of course from a connectivity point of view and in terms of reach the larger number of airports are with AI so these are the you know PPP airports that we just talked about and then a few more now on the anvil uh, Navi Mumbai Goa uh, hopefully Vishakapatnam soon and many others of course they have been talked about <coughs> I, we still haven't got the traction on it So of course a uh, whole bunch of policy issues of uh, you know licensing of airlines you know route related issues you know we've always had this <coughs> on routes uh, we had the earlier policy when open skies came in which of course open skies was a very welcome bold move in the 90s but what they did 
you know, in the usual mindset that since the government operated one did both profitable and non-profitable, of course, partly because it was imposed on them. So when I get private, you know, I open it up, I should bundle it for them also. You know, otherwise, uh, the, the idea of that it's not a level playing field. And so you got the private airlines and they said, look, if you do so many in the commercially viable sort of routes, then a certain percentage must necessarily be in the non-commercially viable routes. Of course, much to airlines kind of resisting it. So finally, we've learned from other sectors like telecom was a very good example. In telecom, also the first policy came when they bundled it. Commercially viable and a certain proportion in the non-viable route, uh, non-viable segments. But the non-viable segments, there was a lot of dragging of feet. Within two years, the then government realized it's not going to work. They unbundled and they said, let's pick a small fee, a 5% fee, put it in a fund and through that fund bid out to the for the non-viable segments so that those who want subsidy will be given. You know, that's a better model and that has worked in telecom. So that's how the Udan scheme has come in and uh, hopefully we will see though I think in the first year the, the you know, evaluation is, well, it's moving but you know can you know maybe still some changes are required so okay that's on the route related issues well aircraft there's a lot to be done in uh, you know at least getting uh, manufacturing here and <coughs> fuel charges yeah we've done i think taxation is uh, improved on it uh, to the benefit of the segment availability of staff airport related charges of course restructuring of aai Earlier we mentioned about uh, air traffic control and airport, both are together uh, under AAI. Most countries in the world, they are separated, you know, should we be separating it? Air traffic control needs to be independent, arm's length, and it's a different business from airport uh, management. Well, for a variety of reasons, AAI feels, you know, they are better off having both under the same umbrella. <coughs> okay, of course, airport privatization. So, of course, positives of the state of aviation, you know, of course, still the per capita travel, I think we, this is a huge opportunity in India, of course, open sky policy, reduction in bilaterals, I think that's a great move. Uh, in many ways, the developed countries have sort of forced it and, uh, you know, I guess we need to catch up on relaxing the bilaterals. We've started doing it with a few countries now so that the international markets are freer. <coughs> PPP in airports, the new civil aviation policy, I think, of course, interestingly, in civil aviation policy statements have always been bold. I mean, not only the new civil aviation policy, even the earlier uh, policy, the Naresh Chandra committee report and all that, I mean, they were pretty bold. But how much was actually, you know, put into implementation was uh, an issue anyway. Well, let's hope, Ude Desh Ke Aam Nagrik. So, well, some of the negatives, you know, aircraft manufacturing, for years we've been talking about it. Have we been able to really do something commercially viable, whether MRO, yeah. Also, you know, are we overstretching airports? I, there is a concern, I think, because, uh, you know, we want to go to 250 airports. I worry, you know, uh, are we ready for it? You know, even 100 and odd airports, we're not fully utilizing them. And the number of non-viable airports under AAI is uh, already large. I mean, should we be thinking of multimodal models? You know, why a Hubli and a Belagavi, you know, within 100 kilometers, two airports, both now invested in two and, and you know, you have one flight or, you know, two flights. Bo typically in transport, frequency is important. So we need to be able to aggregate traffic. So, you know, with roads kind of improving quite a bit, especially inter-regional, you know, shouldn't 
airlines in fact think of branded bus services you know why not make hubli the you know a bigger one for and hubli belgavi connect with buses uh, you know build a catchment even in bangalore if a passenger has to travel for 2 hours you know i think in an inter regional sense a 2 hour collection uh, uh, range may not be out of place so i'm not sure you know 250 airports we are still quite there but then you know politically it seems to make sense uh, we'd like to talk about more airports because everybody feels there will be an airport maybe in hilly areas remote you know we need because there the road connectivity may not be good but i think it needs to be um, properly uh, examined fine i think these are some of the issues i'd uh, leave uh, you all i mean there are a lot of customer issues you know sometimes i find that even at a basic level to me um, for example in an airport do we even segment in terms of service requirements the emplaining passenger and the you know the departing passenger and the arriving passenger and understand their needs um an arriving passenger in many airports the view is okay job is done move on there might be services that an arriving passenger needs even after arrival and uh, you know in fact that's where i like the private player model because i think to the credit of gmr gvk they have applied their mind to that and if you find in their airports even on the arrival side you get a lot of services what about visitors you know indian culture is so beautiful we lots of people come to receive to send off and what do we do to them you know god knows whether it is western airport designs that we adopt where that culture is not so much or is it some false notion of security you know people have to just hang out what a huge and wonderful opportunity it is so you know i think lots of thought many of them simple low hanging fruits but we have you know we have a long way to go but actually a clearly visible way to go okay well thank you very much with that and